Father, we thank you and bless you. Thank you because you love us. And thank you because you love the young ones, dear Lord. Yes, they are weak, but you are strong. This afternoon, we gather in this place called by your name. We know to you, Lord, it just please to you to give us the breath of this day. And therefore, this afternoon, oh Father, we dedicate ourselves to you, to you, Lord. As you have dedicated the children to you, to your Father, this hour, we dedicate ourselves to you because you know you have a word for us. Open our inner ears that we can perceive what you are saying, Jehovah Father, because you never gather your people in vain. I want to surrender myself to you, Jehovah Father. I want to thank you because I know I don't have anything that I can offer, but speak to your people through me in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. May have our seats. Vanasifiwe. Welcome to this service. The Lord is here. He was waiting for us. And thank you for making the appointment. We know God never gathers his people in vain. And we are here for a mission. And I know you not leave this place the way you came. My name is Beatrice Waithaka, and I'm born again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am a member of this church for our visitors. And I want to thank our bishop and Mamalis in absentia for giving me this chance to share what the Lord has placed in me. I know it is not mine. It is ours. And I know we can go places. This afternoon, I want to build on what we've been, the whole of this year, even years to come, We've been looking at the topic of mounting up. And you know, for you to mount up, you need so many things. Therefore, we'll be building every Sunday on one ingredient to make you have wings so that you can mount up. You can never mount up without a wing. You need wings for us to mount up. And therefore, this afternoon, by the grace of God, I want to speak on the topic of growth. Growth. Growth in Kukua. For those who are mothers, if you give birth to a child, maybe one year, it is a concern. Because there are those who even walk with eight months, ten months and one year. So if your child is two years, three years, but on wakubebua, it is a concern to the mothers, even to the fathers. Because we need growth. The same case applies to our lives in the Christian realm. We need to grow. And for us to mount out this year, we need to grow. We need to grow wings. We need to grow in many ways and many areas in our lives so that we can be able to mount up with the wings like an eagle. And the best example is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke 2.52, Luke 2.52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. We all want to grow. Think about Jesus. He could have come from heaven over a weekend. And comes on Saturday. And Sunday he's crucified. On Monday he resurrects and goes back to his father. But Jesus knew one thing. He must walk this journey with us. So that when you say you are hungry, he knows what it means to be hungry. When you say, yes, I'm thirsty, he knows what it means to be thirsty. When you say you are fasting, he knows what you go through when you are fasting. And that's where we have a very good roadmap. And that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to grow, but how, how often do we actually take steps in the right direction? Yes, you can grow. For us, you, you, who, who, me, I teach in the New Believers class, and this is what I normally tell the students. If you plant a tree and you never nurture it, yes, it will grow, but it will grow this way. Are we together? But a tree that is nurtured, it will grow straight. And you know when a tree is grown up, it is very hard for you to take it back to what you wanted it to be. So it is very crucial for you to know the steps that you are taking for your growth. And somebody said this, it doesn't matter how tall your grandfather was, you must do your own growing. Work out on your own growing. As the Bible says that you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And this afternoon, we want to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ, how he grew in stature, in wisdom, in favor in, with God and favor with man. Deep inside our mind, we know that Jesus was God, but he came to this earth 
in this nature so that when you go through hard times, he knows what you, what you are going through. He came, identified with us, with our weaknesses. He had the same flesh as I have. And he knew that this flesh can be sick. This flesh can be healed. And that's where this morning we want to know the secret behind his success. Jesus grew intentionally with his mind, choices, spirit, and community. As much as we are growing, how are you growing? You have to grow in your choices. There are things that you used to do when you are young. Today you cannot do them. You have to grow in your community. You have to grow in your spirit. All this. Even to, in your mind, you have, your thinking capacity must change from how you used to think last year and this year. Maybe last year you were 20 years. Today you are 21 years. How you used to think last year? It's not the same way you're going to think this year. Because as the days and years progresses, even your thinking capacity must change. While Jesus is God, he was also with man, with his human nature highlighted in this passage. And so, he took steps to develop himself. And this gives us a roadmap. He took steps to do what? To develop himself. And this gives us an assurance that we can make it. This gives us a roadmap that when we follow this roadmap, it's going to take us to heaven. Because Jesus came and he went back victorious. Jesus grew in four main areas. The stature, wisdom, favor with man, and favor with with God. Let's look at wisdom. Number one, let's look at wisdom. There's nothing more, more valuable to our personal growth than wisdom. And you can find this from the book of Proverbs. From chapter 1 to chapter 31, it talks about wisdom. This man was full of wisdom. And you're going to copy some, some, some truths and some keys from the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs 4 verse 7, 4, 7. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. You get wisdom. It is going to cost you. But get it. And you have, uh, after you have got it, you get understanding. Wisdom is valuable. Costly and also continuous. And as I said earlier, it is a continuous thing. Last year you had this wisdom. This year you need this wisdom to be upgraded. Because as much as you are growing, things are changing. And you must change as years are changing. You must change as things are changing. Remember this. Learners. Leaders, sorry, leaders are learners. And you never stop learning. Even those who are in school. We have professors in this place. There's nowhere that is written learning ends. There's nowhere. Every day you wake up, you learn a new thing. Even as we're in marriage, every day you wake up in the morning, you, 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 you learn a new thing concerning your spouse. You've been married for 50 years, but every day there's something you're learning new concerning your spouse. Because learning, it is continuous. It's not a one-day thing, and then you close the books, put them in the archives. No. It is a learning. It is something that is continuous. In the book of Proverbs 9.9, 9, the Bible says, instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. You see, you are striking not the fool, but the wise. So that they do what? They become wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. Who is your teacher? Can you be taught? Others will remain in the same position. Teach them. The wise person, get this, the wise person is not a know-it-all. A wise person is not a know-it-all, but a learn-it-all. A wise person is not a know-it-all, but a learn-it-all. Therefore, learning is continuous. Every day you wake up, you learn something new. Even though, can you imagine the time that we were born, we found the Bible. There's no extra chapter or extra book that has been added. It is the same Bible, Genesis to the Revelation. And every day you wake up, you do your devotion, you get a new revelation from the same Bible. You read that chapter last year, today it became new because learners, 
Learners are not know it all, but learn it all. Wisdom also brings blessings. Wisdom also brings blessings. In the book of Proverbs 3.13, the Bible says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Blessed. You want to be blessed? Please find wisdom. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Therefore, it is spiritual. Wisdom is spiritual. Wisdom comes through understanding and obeying the teaching of the Bible. I'm not talking about the wisdom from the world, but the wisdom from the word of God, from the Bible. If you want to become wise, we must see the Bible as our manual for living. When you buy anything electronic, you are given a manual. Therefore, even our lives, we need a manual. And the manual is the Bible. Make the Bible your best friend. If you want wisdom, make the Bible your best friend. In the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Verse 7, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. These commandments. And this is the Lord who is addressing us. This com not those, but these. Make it present. It is these commandments that I give you today. It's about us and our children. We grow in wisdom as we guard our minds from worldly influences, which mean that wisdom is pure. Wisdom, wisdom is pure. Because you guard your mind. What are you thinking? In the thought line, what are you thinking? If somebody could open your mind this hour, what are you thinking? Are you here or you have already left us? Wisdom is pure. In the book of Psalms 101 and verse 3, Psalms 101 and verse 3, the Bible says, I will not look with approval of anything that is vile. I hate what faithless people do. I will have no part in it. This is about your thought line. You hate what faithless people do. Which company do you belong to? We can also choose the friends we keep, which means that wisdom is relational. Wisdom is relational, and we find this from the book of Proverbs 13, 20. Wisdom is relational. Proverbs 13, 20. The Bible says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. And somebody said, you walk with nine rich people, you be the tenth one. You walk with nine poor people, you be the tenth one. Therefore, you walk with nine fool pe foolish people, you be the tenth one. Walk with the wise and you'll be wise. Praying for wisdom is one of the most important things to pray for. I don't know what you are praying for this morning. We have so many things we are praying for. But my prayer to you is that number one, pray for wisdom. Because when you have wisdom, you are going to excel in so many things, not worldly things, even worldly, but spiritual things, you are going to excel. And then you excel also in worldly things. Spiritual things, they require wisdom. It is one of the, it was one of the prayers God will answer. One of the prayers God will answer. Wisdom. It is one of the requests that God is impressed by. This is one of the reasons why Solomon is considered to be wise. And we can read this from the book of 1 Kings 3, verse 5 to 13. The Bible says, At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Stop there. Just, yes. The Lord said, Ask for whatever you want me to give to you. Put yourself in the shoes of Solomon. And the Lord asks you, ask for whatever you want me to give you. What will you ask? Thank you, Sikuku. Sikuku, 
Don't say me to you ask for wisdom. Please let's be let's be Christians. Let's be Christians. Utaitisha nini? Eh? Nyumba. Na mwingine utaitisha nini? Bibi. Mwingine utaitisha nini? Bwana. Mwingine? Eh? Afia. Good. Na mwingine? Haya. Ama na mahitaji? Pesa hivi utaitisha nini? Ama the list is Uju utaanza wapi? But Solomon asked for wisdom. Remember this man was given to, he, he has just been appointed to be the king. And he has a big number of the exercise to reign. But he asked for one thing. He could have asked the life of his enemies. Sindio, wata wakufe. But Solomon asked for one thing. He asked for wisdom. Let's continue. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son. Now, this is the son. You have given him this, a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count on number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern these great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. Hold it there. The Lord was pleased. Is the Lord pleased with your request? When you go to pray, those are the prayers that we make. But the Lord was pleased that Solomon has asked for this. Number 11, verse 11. So God said to him, since you have not asked for this and not for long life. Sorry, for long life or well for yourself or have asked for the death of your enemies but for discernment in administering justice I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. Can you imagine God telling you that I'll give you even what you have not asked for? Both, for both wealth and honor. So that in your lifetime, you'll have no equal among kings. What a promise. But you know, all this came because he asked for what? For wisdom. How many things are we denying ourselves? Because of asking from this side instead of from this side. Number two, stay child. Jesus grew up. Stature is quality or status gained by growth, development, or achievement. That is stature. Jesus came here on a mission. And he knew that every day I minus my days of going to the cross. Therefore, Jesus lived knowing that he came here for a mission. And I'll talk to us this morning. At that three years, that is a peak of time. And every day you tell us, I cannot make it. I need to get married. It is good to get married. But remember this. Jesus had the same body that we have. And he made it. At 33 years, Jesus was not accused of adultery. Even for one day. He was a young man like most of us are in this house this morning. But how is your life? How is your character? Nobody pointed a finger at the life of Jesus. That I met Jesus with my girl. I met Jesus with my wife. No. Jesus maintained his character. Because he knew he came here on a mission. But we are living as if we have come to the end of ourselves. As if we are not going to heaven. Friends, Jesus is coming back. But 
what my prayer is. Will you be found in that book of life? People will work out your life with the materials you provide. My mom used to tell us, when you go to the forest, you cut trees. We bring people that those materials. They are going to build you a house with the materials that you brought. If the trees are this way, your house will be combo combo. If your materials are straight, your trees are straight, your house will be straight. Friends, what kind of a material are we giving the Lord? Because he's the builder. And you're bringing the material. Today you are born again. Today you are in the other world. Where do you belong? Jesus knew that he lived an unquestionable life. Nobody questioned his life. And he was in the same body that I have. You say, no, I'm not married, but I have to watch pornography. For what? For satisfying the flesh. Jesus lived only 33 years. Many young people, are that they are not married, they are still looking and searching. But Jesus knew that I can live a holy life because I know where I came from. We all know that actions have consequences. And sometimes, the greatest accomplishment are made by one small decision at a time. You said, I want to go and watch. And then, you defile your eyes. It is out of the watching, it registers in your mind, and then it follows in an action. You see the story of David. David watched by the Sheba bathing. What followed? It is the, the thought. Then he called somebody and said, go and bring me that, that lady. Then what happened? The action. And from there, you know the story. Is your neighbor on? You know, this is a very tricky service. Please Behind your mask, look at your neighbor. Is she or he on? Yes. There's an old saying that says, to eat an elephant, you must do so one bite at a time. You see how big an elephant is? Munajua ndovu. Ndovu ndio elephant. Ukiambi ukule ndovu, utanza wapi? But the saying says, you must do it one bite at a time. Unakata kidogo, finally utamaliza. That is what we do. Unakuja, una, unalamba, naka kidole kamoja, kidole mbili, mukono. Finally, un, un, unaswim kwa thambi. Think of those who run the marathon. See, this, this one step after another, a step after another, and the result is the marathon, and they have won. Friends, it is all about us to work out our stature. Our character. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It is the discipline of a well-ordered home which makes good citizens. If there's discipline in your home, believe you me, there will be good citizens. It is a blessing above all others to grow up in a house or in a house or a home where the gospel rule prevails. Because you can never go wrong with the gospel. And that's why it's called the good news. Not only the gospel, but the good news. There's no way there are good news apart from this one. It is a blessing. Yes, I've said that. A man by the name of John Oden, he's a famous basketball coach, said, the true test of a person's character is what they do when no one is watching. The true test of a person's character is what they do when no one is watching. And the bishop said here sometimes back that your character is who you are under the blanket. Your character. Jesus knew that people are watching and therefore he was very keen on his character. How is your character developed? One choice at a time. Jesus grew up like all of us. He didn't come to he from heaven and said, I have landed. He went through conception. He went through childhood. He, went, he prayed with the other boys. But finally he knew that I'm not meant for this world. I'm a sojourner in this world. And he kept the faith. 
How is your testimony and how is your character? So if our teacher of character is what we do, we must recognize how important our daily decisions are. When you wake up in the morning, what decisions do you make? Those are the ones that make your character. In the book of Joshua 24, verse number 15, Joshua 24, 15, the Bible says, but if serving the law seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you'll serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond. And then he says, served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Friends, life is about choices. And every choice has a consequence. What have you chosen this afternoon? Or oh, today. Today is the end of February. Two months are over in this year. And you are still fair, saying, I will choose. I will choose. Remember this. That life is about choices. And every choice has a consequence. Joshua gave them a choice. But for him, he chose. For him and his house, he chose to serve the Lord. Following the conquering and settling of the promised land, Israel's leader urged the people to whom they will serve. Much of the Old Testament speaks of the consequences of the people's response to either follow or not follow the Lord, revealing the need for a Savior who alone would follow God perfectly. We thank God for Jesus Christ. He came as our Savior. He's not, the Bible says in the book of Revelation 3.20 that I stand at the door and knock. When anybody hears my voice and opens, he'll come in and dine with you. It is just a matter of choice. You can refuse to open the door or let him in so that he can come and dine with you. Number three, favor with God. He just grew in favor with God. Jesus is much, is, is much more than an example of spirituality. He is the son of God. Remember, Jesus came to this world as a man. But he is God. So he came so that I can, I can identify with this flesh and what you are going through. Remember, he is the son of God. The lamp of God. The word of God. The savior. And the lord of the universe. He is all these titles, but he came and identified with you that you can make it. Therefore, don't worry. You have one who went, our forerunner, he came before us. When Jesus is more than our spiritual example, he is never less. When you have him, Jesus is never less. Hakuna mari utapungukiwa. Useme alinifanya hivi, akufanya hivi. Jesus is never less. If at all, he is our spiritual example. He modeled for us the two types of spiritual disciplines. Discipline number one, personal discipline. You need personal discipline for you to grow, for you to mount up this year. Friend, you need personal discipline. In personal discipline, the book of Mark 1.35, Mark 1.35, very early in the morning, when it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Remember, this is Jesus, not him and the disciples, but him alone. Very early in the morning, he left others asleep because he knew that his strength can only come from his father. And before the day breaks, he knew enemies are waiting for him as the day breaks. So he knew one thing, that I must wake up very early and go to a solitary place alone. Bishop asked us in the second service that you, how many of us eat one plate in seven days? Now, you are not fasting, but you only take one plate in seven days. You don't have a fellowship. You don't come to Monday prayers. You don't come for Wednesday Bible study. You, you don't have a home cell. And then you come here on Sunday, you take another meal. Can you take a meal? For seven days, once. For a vehicle, you can fuel a vehicle na petro ya kukamwezi muzima. 
depending on which you are. There are vehicles that have two tanks. So you can feed your, your vehicle with petrol for a whole month. But can you feed this stomach a meal for seven days? Is it possible? Jesus woke up very early in the morning when it was still dark. Got up, left the house. I think that is the key word. He left the house. You are not even leaving the house, the bed. Leaving, not, not leaving the house. Even you don't leave the bed. And you want to grow? It can't work miraculous. Friends, we have to do our own growth. And he went off to a solitary place. Me, I just want to tell me that this is a solitary place, not in a matatu. Are you serious? Where he prayed. For us to mount up these year, friends, we must change the strategy. How we've been living before. Otherwise, Bishop said in this same pulpit that some of us will not mount up. And I also said that is not my portion. If this body will make me to miss mounting up, better I leave it behind. Did you intend on a nini? Because me, I want to mount up. Jesus prioritized spending time with God the Father alone. Do you have a time that you have said this time with my Father? Not your earthly Father, but the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. What a privilege that you can have some time that I have come. And the Lord knows your voice. I have come that we may reason together. He demonstrated the personal spiritual discipline of prayer, fasting, meditation, and solitude. Spiritual discipline of fasting. When is the last time you fasted? What are you to do a juicy church? You only cooperate because it's for the church. Personal. This is my time with God. When is the first time? Because in this church we fast in January for 40 days. We fast in July for 21 days. And those are the only two times that you fast. And you want, us to, you want to grow. You want to mount up. You mount up with one wing. And you know you cannot go far. He demonstrated spiritual disciplines of prayer, fasting, meditation. That quiet time is about you and God. You, you talk and then you give him time to speak to you. Prayer it's supposed to be like a father and a son, or father and a daughter. You speak to your father, then give him time to speak to you back. You take off. You take off. You take off. Can you have time to meditate upon the word of God? And that solitude. Jesus also shows us that other spiritual disciplines are done with others. The first one was personal. Oh, let us look at the other one, the corporate discipline. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another onto our love and good deeds. 25. Not giving up meeting together. Hold it that. Are you in this place? You don't have a home cell. You only feed once in a week. Therefore, you only come to church on Sunday after service, well, Meshiba. For how long can that food take you for on a Sunday? One meal on Sunday. Not giving up, meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. The writer knew that there are some. My prayer is that you are not among the some. But encouraging one another. This is a journey. We need to encourage one another. It's one another in good works and encouraging one another that we are almost there don't give up because this is a journey and all the more as you see the day approaching encouraging one another tukitiana moyo usipe moyo ndugu yangu we are almost there where we have come nimbali we have come from nimbali sana where we are going it is very near encouraging one another all this thing can be done in the home cells we encourage one another once a week, we are here on Monday for prayers, both online and physical. On Wednesday, we are here for times of refreshing, both physical and online. And then we meet here on Sunday to celebrate 
what the Lord has done. Where can you be found? You only come to church on Sunday and it is over. In Luke 4.16, Jesus said, the Bible says, Jesus went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day. He went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read. Just because he knew he cannot live alone. He went to the synagogue where he was brought up. He knew one culture that in the house of the Lord, you'll meet me, you'll, I'll meet my brother and my sister, and we are going to spur one another in good works. Friends, you cannot grow alone. You need me and I need you. The synagogue was a gathering for worship, scripture reading, fellowship with other believers, and prayer. Yes, you can pray alone, but you need corporate prayer. The wonder Bible says that we are two or three gather, not you alone. We are two or three gather in my name. I mean, they are this. The Bible says that whatever true we agree on earth, you be agreed in heaven. Do you have a prayer partner? In the book of 1 Timothy 4, 7, the Bible says, having, done, having nothing to do with godless minds and old wives' tales. And I was thinking about this scripture and it said, where are men or where are husbands? Why only wives? Do you have wives in this place? Where are the husbands? Do you have husbands here? Na kwa nini walituonea wakasema wives? Sindi tunapeana haka ya zaabunuas. Having nothing to do with godless minds and old wives tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. And finally, favor with the man. Favor with the man. Have you ever noticed that the more time you spend with someone the more you begin acting like that person. Have you ever noticed? Even the interpreters may have noticed. An interpreter interprets for the preacher. Even the politicians. I might speak to somebody here. Okay. It could be a personal style, the way they talk, even just a general preference. But the fact is, our friends can have an involuntary impact on our lives. Our friends. Jesus won the favor of men by seeking the favor of God. He didn't say, you, you, you respect me? No. He won the favor of men by first winning the favor of God. You want to, be, to have favor with men? Seek the favor of God. It is not so important that man should be pleased with us as that God should. Leave alone people. The book says in the book of, I think it is in the book of Proverbs, that if your ways pleases the Lord, he's going to make peace, he's going to make you to make peace with your enemies. Can you imagine? Just we are always pleasing the Lord. Your enemies will have at peace with them. They are for seek the Lord, and it's going to give you favor before men. But man's favor is more likely to be through seeking God's favor than in any way. The best of human friends cannot win for us God's favor. The best friends. You have so many good friends, but none can make you win God's favor. What we can control is whether that impact will be positive or negative. It is often said, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Who are your friends? In Proverbs 22, 24 and 25 says, Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered. <laughs> or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Choose your friends. Because friends can make you or destroy you. In the New Testament, Paul also claims in 1 Corinthians 15.33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. 
if you take one rotten potato, one, just one, and put it in a sack full of good potatoes, they are all going to rot. Do you have farmers in the house? Do you have farmers in the house? Just one rotten potato, put it in a sack, the rest will be rotten. How can we grow in our relationships with others like you just did and use relationships to become more like him? We can. In the book of Ecclesiastes 4.12, the Bible says, And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You need me, I need you. Three cord, threefold cord is not quickly broken. But alone, you can't make it. We are better together. Because what I know, you don't know. And what you know, I don't know. And in this life, this Christian life, we don't compete. We complement one another. Because this is a journey. And as I wind up, I've said four things. We need to grow in wisdom. For us to be able to mount up this year, we must grow in wisdom. And James said, if you don't have it, or if you lack it, ask for it. And God will graciously give you wisdom because he needs you to grow. Number two, I said you grow in stature. Galatians 4, 1 and 2. The Bible says, think of it this way. If a man dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better, than, better off than slaves until they grow up. You need to grow because there is an inheritance your father has kept for you. But you must grow up. Otherwise, you and the slaves are all the same. Even though they actually own everything their father had. You stay in the same position until you grow up. And when we grow up, we'll get our inheritance. Come to think about it. You've been walking and yet, there is a Mercedes Benz waiting for you. But you have to grow up. You must have a driving license. You must be of age for you to get that vehicle. There is a house. How many bedrooms? Name them. But the Lord is saying, until you grow up. The house is written in your name, but it's waiting for you to grow up. Therefore, we must grow up. Number three, we must have favor with God. How do you have favor with God? Through intimacy. Seeking the Lord. That you wake up in the morning. You know when you wake up in the morning, you must open your eyes. Iyo sini kawaida. Kuna mutu anahenda kama mefunga macho. Silazimu fungue macho. So, when you wake up in the morning, open your eyes. The first person to salute is your father. That intimacy walk with God. And finally, favor with the man through fellowship. You cannot live alone. You are not an island. Mahali mtu anakaa peke yake tu ni langata. Unajua uko kwa grave side. Huko ndio mtu anakaa peke yake. Mtu anazikwa na anawachwa huko. But as long as you are living, you cannot live alone. You need me. You need fellowship so that you can inspire one another in good works. Father in Jesus name we thank you. And I bless you this afternoon. We desire to be more like you. Jesus you made it. We can also make it. Help us, Jehovah Father. Help us to look for wisdom. Help us to grow in stature in our character, Abba Father. That you are born again Monday through to Monday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to look for favor. Favor before you through intimacy, through your word and prayer. Oh God, and finally, help us to get favor with the man through fellowship. We know, dear Lord, we cannot make it alone. We need one another. We need you. Love you to your Father and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.